the last half of the 19th century, Cairo, Illinois was fulfilling its destiny at the confluence of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. In 1889, the city directory listed five railroads, nine steamboat lines, three hospitals, five newspapers, even a board of trade. If you look at the streets in Cairo, Cairo they're wide. Cairo was not intended to be a little town. It was intended to be a city. A progressive city with an elegant library that featured rooms for poetry readings and lectures, supported by those who lived in mansions on the cobblestone streets of Millionaire's Row. It was a city that defined the American Gilded Age. Caro's leaders called each other Captain and Colonel, titles earned in the Civil War, but a man could be called Captain if he piloted a riverboat, like William Parker Halliday who was also known as W.P. W.P. was the oldest of five Halliday brothers. The second oldest was Edwin, who served as an officer in the Confederate Army. During and after the war, the Halliday brothers in Cairo got rich in lumber, coal mining, and banking, and everything else they touched. The Halliday legacy includes W.P.'s mansion, known as Riverlore, For generations, Cairo buried its dead within the city limits on what was known as Cemetery Ridge. But floods and seep water persisted, and the city decided to move the graves to cemeteries on higher ground in Pulaski County. With Cairo, it was just like New Orleans. You couldn't bury people here. So they could take them by rail up to mounds and bury them in the Beach Grove Cemetery and there you had the people with means from Cairo choosing to bury in that cemetery. You can meet the train at 2nd and Ohio, or you can meet the train at 12th and, and Washington, or something like that, you know. It, it was just like it was a social event and not a funeral. Other burial sites include the Cairo City Cemetery and Calvary Catholic Cemetery in Villa Ridge. Beach Grove represents Cairo's entry into what's known as the Rural Cemetery Movement. The idea was to move burials away from the living and encourage the living to visit, even if they didn't know anyone buried there. It's landscapes, there'll be roads, people are invited in, there would be tree plantings, there would be formal entranceways, and it was meant to be more of a park-like setting. The families bought sections and then added features like an open curb, wrought iron fences, and gates. You would not see fencing in a cemetery today. This is something that was famous back then. It was in, in use, very popular. Um, and some ways with the status symbol as well. Some fences will be rather simple, but this one's very ornate. Um, it would have been shipped in probably from Chicago or someplace like that. By the time Beach Grove Cemetery opened in 1855, marble replaced local stone as the preferred gravestone material. But until you have railroads in Illinois, you don't really see marble coming in. So it's by the mid-1800s that you begin to see marble markers in Illinois. Polished pure white marble and Christian symbols appealed to America's growing sentimental views toward death. The dead now slept. Headstone motifs signified everlasting life, like the human hand depictions found in multiple variations, including the hand grasp. The design suggests one spouse helping the other to heaven as one of many interpretations. The lamb represented the innocence of childhood. Hundreds of fraternal organizations existed in 19th century America, including the Freemasons, whose burials include the square and the compass, organized around the letter G. The G stands for geometry, or God, or perhaps both. This symbol was given to women related to Freemasons. The letters, arranged in a circle, stand for a verse found in John 12, 15. Fear not, daughter of Zion, Behold, the king cometh. 
The letters A-M-R-Y form an anagram for Mary. The G.A.R. Medal represents the Grand Army of the Republic, an organization of Union Civil War veterans. Veterans organizations before the G.A.R. were an elitist societies that were either officers or descendants of officers. And the G.A.R. came along and it said, everybody's equal. If you were a general, you could be a member. If you were a private, you could be a member. And the one of the models was we drank from the same canteen. The obelisk and column reflect ancient architectural features popular in the 19th century. Caro leaders utilized the design to mark their final resting places at Beech Grove, including Samuel Statz Taylor. He arrived in Cairo in 1851 as a trustee of the Cairo City Property Company. Taylor is credited with negotiating the terms that required the Illinois Central Railroad to construct levees to carry its line into Cairo. And when you look at the fill soil that is around Cairo in our levees, it was hauled in here to make the railroads. And that is why we had levees that early. And he recognized that Carroll couldn't grow unless we had a way to control the flooding. The largest monument belongs to the Hallidays. This stone marker weighs an estimated 22 tons and identifies the final resting place for W.P. Halliday. William L. Hamilton owned the Mound City Marineways, a site on the Ohio River where three ironclad gunboats were built for the Navy during the Civil War. 